Hey, what's up guys, me Jao Random, and this is another video. I know I'm always saying that I'm always switching up my content, but this time, we're going back to the roots and go plain and simple. I'm pretty sure you all know that I love Smash. It's my favorite game franchise for its different take at fighting games, replacing health bars, percentages, the more damage you inflict in your opponents, the higher the percentages goes, and the higher percentage that you or your opponent have, the more knockback you'll receive. It's such a unique overtake that what makes Smash so fun and competitive. The game actually has more depth than you'd think. Of course, there's the mechanical system, the stages, button inputs, and of course, the characters. Smash has such a diverse characters, <clears throat> except the Fire Emblem characters, <clears throat> that each of them have their own distinct moveset that either gives them an edge on the match or a disadvantage to themselves. Y'all know where this is gonna be from reading the title. This is my top 10 characters of Smash for the Wii U that I use. Keep in mind that this is simply my opinion and that the characters I'm about to show you are the characters I use either competitively or casually. I'm going to list some of the characters as a casual pick and ones that I use for competitive Smash. If everyone has their straps ready for this bumpy ride, cause honestly my list is pretty bizarre and weird, then let's get on with the characters. This one I consider to be my most unorthodox character yet. Olimar. See, not many people like to pick this character for his poor combo games, lightweight, and his use of the Pikmin. So I had the bright idea to try and use him myself. Of course, he was not the best, but I don't consider him to be the worst. The thing about Olimar is that he's placed as one, if not the worst character of Smash 4. But you see, that's where he shines, my fellow viewers. See, most people don't expect much from Olimar. Many people sleep on the character. Him thinking it's like a free win. His Pikmins are his most reliable and only tool of use to combat other fighters. Depending on which Pikmin you have, it can very much take stocks early. This is what makes Olimar so fun to use. He can space people out and get up close and personal. If you ever want to jank your friends in your Smash sessions, then this is a character to use. I guarantee it. Rob is for many considered a character that can be easily juggled for his size. For me though, he's just Mr. Funtime. Although my skill with Romp aren't really the best, he's still a fun character to play as. His down special can be used to set up so much potential kill combos and true spikes. His side B is multi-hit in case for characters who are combo heavy. Well, keep in mind though, this move is very punishable for its cooldown and his lasers can zone people out for breathing time for Rob. His forward smash ain't the strongest in his arsenal, since up smash is pretty much a better option for his kills. Down smash is a multi-hit, but the same case for side B, but his recovery makes up for his cons. Let me tell you, Rob is one of the few characters that I know that can come back from the stage from a spike. I mean, that's... Legit. Villager might be the same case too, but you don't really expect that from Rob. Still, I struggle to play as him since he's very easy to juggle, honestly. Still, I struggle to play as him since, just like I said before, he's still easy to juggle. But at least, he's not as light as Olimar. Alright, I know what you're gonna say. Jai, why would you put Shulk at number 8? He's like, Super good and blah 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 blah. First of all, I'm not listing him here because I suck with him. If that was the case, then I wouldn't even put him in the list in the first place. First, his pros. Thanks to Shulk's use of the Monado Rs, he can easily zip around the map and even take stocks pretty early. His vision lasts pretty long, but easily punishable. Backslash is pretty good but honestly it's useless even if it hits the opponents at the back. His smash attacks can be avoided when stunned into it and his recovery is subpar. He shines the most in his combo game when you have either the right Monando art or if in the kill percentage. He still struggles as a character for his poor frame data. His moveset can come out too slow for it to be a true combo and he actually has a lot of bad matchups in my opinion. But other than that, he is considered a swordsman, <laughs> at my book at least, 
which means he can space people out with the Monado. Other than that, Shulk doesn't deliver much. If one were to pick him though, I recommend you be patient with Shulk. I do want to give props to the people who can actually play Ness competitively, cause damn, this character can take names. Ness has one of the most dangerous specials in his arsenals. His PK fire can potentially lock players, down B absorbs projectiles, up B can easily kill opponents if placed and timed correctly, even though not exactly the best recovery move ever. Not to mention he has more movesets that can be very deadly for opponents like his forward smash can kill early and reflects projectiles. His up air is a guaranteed kill move on kill percentage and his grab from down throw to forward air is an easy combo to land. As much as I have fun playing with this character, I can't see myself playing him competitively. Here's why. Just like before, his recovery is very poor. He has bad matchups like the infamous Ness versus Rosalina and Luma for Rosalina's down special able to suck projectiles including Ness's PK Thunder. He's light and pretty vulnerable in the air if he loses all his jumps. His back throw does help him on ground game since it's the only kill move on the ground he has besides his forward smash. He doesn't have too much options when grounded but his floating mechanics does help and weaken him at the same time. When you mix a character for being light and floaty, you'll find a character that can be easily killed in early percentage. Ness takes time and effort to learn, but if you practice hard enough and learn matchups then I promise you, Ness does not disappoint. Look, if there's another character I use in this list that's unpredictable and janky, it's Wii Fit Trainer. Wii Fit has some of the most weirdest placed hitbox in the game and has some of the most weirdest neutral game that somehow works. Wii Fit's hitbox are so jank that her forward air can actually spike somehow. If I had to quiz you on where her hitbox is placed, you'll probably get it wrong. Look, we'll do it right now. Click the poll at the side and choose where do you think the hitbox is placed. I'll give you 5 seconds. You done? Well guess what? What you chose? It's wrong. Cause I'm sure you picked either front, down, or her fist. Nope. Mm -mm. Nah. Nope. It's on the side of her fucking foot. Like, why? Why is it there? Why does it exist? Not to mention, if timed and placed correctly, her side B volleyball throw can, can, can spike! It's spike! Why does it spike? Saluta's son is deadly for a projectile and her down B recovers some of her percentages. Recovery is pretty bad but what really makes her a struggle to fight against is her overall moveset. It's so wonky that it makes it almost impossible to counter and predict. Not to mention she's actually pretty heavy for a trainer. But the problem with Wii Fit though is as much as she may have projectiles, she does have trouble with characters who can space people out, technical characters and combo heavy characters. One of her worst matchups I can safely say are characters who specializes in speed. Sonic and Captain Falcon are the ones that definitely come to mind. If you plan on picking her, try your best to zone people out and find good openings cause once you stop your combo to rack damage, Wii Fit can either make the game or break it. Reading your opponents is key when using it. Use her janky hitbox and projectiles to your advantage. It's sad to see a character with so much potential be placed at the bottom of the tier list, with many players backing up that placement too. I honestly don't think Jigglypuff is the worst character in the game. Even though she's never been touched by the patch before, why Sakurai? Why? even though Jigglypuff does not have a lot of options with her kill moves. Movesets that can pretty much kill when grounded are either rest or fully charged F smashes. Let me repeat that, rest or fully charged F smashes. That's pretty much her only option as to why she's placed so below. Remember what I said before when you mixed floaty and light into one character? Yup, that's Jigglypuff too.
but honestly I think she benefits from her lightness and floaty mechanics. Her neutral game is actually pretty good. She definitely benefits from her short hops and her grab game even though not the most reliable can combo into rest. She's not a character you'd want to challenge offstage and if timed correctly she has her sing, although I recommend not using it since it leaves you open. To me she's like Sheik but her kill potential is greatly decreased. But she does have bad matchups which is why you don't see her a lot in tournaments. Characters who space and zone you, characters who are heavy and combo heavy. Jigglypuff sadly has a lot of bad matchups. But she requires and demands a lot of technicality and good mindset to play with. I really don't recommend that you pick her up. But although you lay these pointers down, then I'm sure you'll do fine. As much as a lot of you probably despise Sonic players, well, too bad I'm one of them too. Sonic is a very strong and fast character being as the fastest character when grounded for his spin dashes and his overall speed mechanics itself. Sonic's F smash is one of his most deadliest kill moves, but this needs to be timed correctly and aimed properly. It's a move that should be used only when you guarantee to land it. Jabs are good for intercepting grounded combos and his down smash is actually his most fastest move. Perfect when you're being locked on but it does have a lot of end lag so be careful for that. Sonic's most notable move that makes him so annoying to fight against is his speed. Dash attack and both his side and down specials since all of those movesets let him move into enemies curled into a ball whilst inflicting damage. Sonic has some combos to work with like his grabs from down throw to up special followed by an up air. This can be performed also from jump from up air to up special to going to up air once again. If racked at the right percentage when performing it. When performing it though I recommend pivoting Sonic's grab. Sonic's neutral air is pretty decent. But Sonic's most deadliest kill move is notably his back air. It can kill in early percentage and it can be used effectively when edge guarding. This is essential for many Sonic players. Last but not least, his up special is actually a pretty good recovery and it can even gimp opponents from returning to the stage. Sonic doesn't have much bad matchups, although if you plan on picking him up though, I recommend learning some of his advanced techs like spin shot and spin dash cancel and spin wave, all those shenanigans. Most definitely a character I consider on the top tier. Yoshi actually has some wonky hitbox at the same time like Wii Fit and has some strong kill moves. His forward air spikes, his F smashes actually has invincibility from frame 3 to 12 and just to inform you his forward smash actually is active from frame 1 to 13 which is insane since he has invincibility during most of those frames, his up smash is deadly, his up air is dangerous, his back has a sweet spot spike potential, down B can break shield, down air can shield pressure for its multi hit, his egg lay can kill when in early percentage off stage and <sighs> he's a dinosaur. All serious though, Yoshi is extremely good for its frame data, his neutral game is very good coming out from around frame 3 and his jabs can cancel out grounded combos. Yoshi is not light but nor is he heavy and he's also floaty which works well in his case. Recovery is not the best since he relies mostly on his double jumps. His egg throw can help him recover but it's mostly used as a projectile. His grabs may be slow but it can lead into devastating follow ups. His notable combos are either grab down throw to up air forward air to up smash, forward air to up air, etc, 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 you know what I mean. Even though I picked up this character recently, he's already become a character I can rely on on my arsenal of characters I use competitively. If you plan on picking up this character, then I recommend that you work on how to get back on the stage and play patiently with Yoshi. Mind games and hard reads are essential to using Yoshi. <sighs> As much as I have a love-hate relationship with swordsmen in this game, and Yoji beginning to outshine my secondary character, Lucina is my pick. 
when I'm up against characters who use spacing and sword fighters. Fucking kill me. Unlike Marth, Lucina's sweet spot does not reside on the tip of her sword, but overall her sword is balanced from top to bottom, giving you an early kill percentage. Lucina works well against characters who need to get up close and personal to inflict damage, since she can use her sword to space them out. Short hop forwarders are her most useful tool. Her jabs can be used to poke shields. Jabs are most useful when you connect from first jab to F smash. Her side B is good for pressuring. Shield break is well good for shields, since it's named shield break for goodness sake. Her up B is good for escaping combos and she has a decent counter. Her neutral game is decent, especially when you connect it with your grab, followed up by either aerial moves. Her recovery comes quick and fast, which is pretty decent, and it can potentially stage buck opponents when you placed it in the right correct timing. Overall, Lucina is decent to pick up. Recommendations are that you need to space yourself well enough, but it's not a priority. Without a doubt, Mario works well with me when it comes to all of these characters. His neutral game is pretty good. He's a combo heavy character, which is his bread and butter. Mario for most is seen as an easy character to master for casual players, but Mario is actually goes deeper than you think. His neutral air can actually cancel out aerial combos. His forward air can spike. Down air can combo to, into many follow-ups. Up air can juggle. His jabs are good for spacing. Forward tilt can distant opponents. His notable up air starts combos, especially if you follow up before with a grab to down throw. Back air can kill early. Down tilt can also extend like up tilt. Like Jesus, guys, do you want me to list everything? His smash attacks has deadly priorities. His down smash comes fast and hits hard. Forward smash can kill you an early percentage, but it has to be timed correctly. His up smash is his most deadliest kill move, especially if you reverse it. Cape can reflect projectiles, his flood can space and push opponents away off stage, and his up special, even though his recovery is not too great since he can be easily gimped, it does come out quick and can even extend combos. Mario is at his best when it comes to grab game. All of his grab throws have follow-ups. Heck, his back throw can kill an early percentage. Mario takes time to learn since he is known to be a combo heavy character. He struggles though when it comes to approaching since Mario doesn't have much to approach with. Even if it was just his neutral special, he does struggle with characters who has more range, especially fucking sword characters. Other than that, it's definitely a good character for you to use. I highly recommend you main him. I'd advise you do learn his combos and play smart with him. Mario is very much dependent on how much combo you can inflict. Checking your opponent's percentage is needed and do remember, take your time to master pivoting and reversed up smashes cause believe me, you'll need it. And that's pretty much my list guys. These are characters I use casually and competitively. Although I'm still nowhere near esports player skills, I'm still trying to do my best to learn and polish these characters I use to better my playstyle. If you didn't see your character here, well, too bad cause I don't use him or I'd probably just suck with that character. Leave me alone. Anyways, let me know if you guys like this list. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. And please, let me know what your list looks like, because I'm actually pretty curious on what characters you guys use and what the placements looks like. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Boop!